Maharshi's Tapatya Vedic communities and Maharshi's Tapatya Vedic cities, you can understand now from the discussions which have come forth, affect the entire life of the city, affect the entire community life. That's the beauty of handling. It's a beautiful principle of Vedic science is to handle one thing by which you can handle everything else. It's a beautiful principle of doing less and accomplishing more. Of all the different, diverse, and intricate aspects of our lives, from education to health to agriculture to politics to government, the many, many different facets of community life, it's a complicated interaction of many individuals and many systems of organization. But Stapatya Veda can nourish them all simultaneously. And the reason for that is, is because it acts from the fundamental level of nature's functioning. Dr. Hagelin showed us how the laws of nature have a fundamental source. And when Stapatya Veda orients life physically, these are structures we're speaking of now, structures of buildings and communities, when the physical structure of life is oriented towards this abstract intelligence of nature, everything gets handled at once. For instance, in the field of education, if the brain coherence of the students is perfect because they're facing east and they're living in these buildings, then the creativity, the intelligence, the comprehension, the focus, and particularly the spontaneous right and natural behavior of the students is automatically ensured by the building in which they're having their classes. In the, theory, in the field of healthcare, if the, if the health facilities and hospitals and treatment centers are built according to Patya Veda, then the cosmic influence comes in and balances the mind and body naturally. And this is very important for prevention and for cure, that the physiology has the support of nature in regaining its balance or maintaining its balance. In the field of agriculture, there's a very, very important principle of Vedic organic agriculture. And this principle explains the inner relationship between coherence in collective consciousness and the level of enlivenment of natural law. When, when society is more coherent, when there's coherence in society, automatically nature itself becomes more enlivened, more natural, more attuned. And when this happens, when the laws of nature are lively, then the food itself picks up that liveliness and coherence of nature. And that food then, when we eat that food, it helps to create a, an increase in coherence in us. So it's a beautiful cyclic reinforcement of coherence, enlivening natural law, increasing the vitality of the food, which in turn creates more coherence. And so we can see that living in a Stapatya Vedic community by creating coherence in the entire community and its surroundings will even affect agricultural development in the area. And finally, in the field of government and politics, which were so keen on having adopt these principles of Stapatya Veda for the entire nation, what causes problems in the political field and in the governmental field, Maharshi says, is the diversifying elements, the, the political parties always vying and conflicting with each other. And what politics and the nation needs is a unifying influence, a coherent influence, to be at the basis of the diversifying elements in national consciousness. And so just by building the government buildings and the, build, and the communities, in accordance with Maharshi's Tapatya Veda, automatically we add the unifying, coherent influence in all the diversified behaviors of the nation. So the government fulfills its purpose of conducting a unified nation of diversified elements simply by building in accordance to this system. So because national life improves, city life improves, community life improves, and individual life improves, all simply from this building system according to natural law. Governments can do nothing more, nothing better for their people than to bring them Maharshi's Tapatya Veda and help in Maharshi's program to globally reconstruct the world. Jay Gurudev. Press Reports on Architecture According to Natural Law 
the re-emergence and application of the timeless wisdom of Stapatya Veda, Vedic architecture in harmony with natural law, as inspired by His Holiness Maharishi Mahashogi, has not escaped the attention of the world press. Already in today's world, there's growing concern at the effects of modern buildings. We hear frequently of sick building syndrome, a syndrome whereby a new office building or apartment block is simply uninhabitable because of the effects of the very structure of the building and the chemicals and materials used in the construction of the building. There are apartment blocks which promote crime and disorder in the most staggering way and this phenomenon is constantly reflected upon in the media as architects and designers and city planners think how to overcome these plagues of modern life, the effect of buildings, cities, suburbs which are not designed in a way that promotes the health and happiness of the inhabitants. Vedic architecture, Vastu Vidya, makes it completely clear why this is the case. It exposes with complete clarity the comprehensive wisdom of how to design lucky buildings, fortune creating, peace promoting, health promoting buildings that support the life and longevity and good fortune of the inhabitants of those buildings. The renaissance of Vedic architecture and public interest in it has largely been sparked initially by the emergence of an entire city in the Midwest of the United States designed using these principles of Vastu Vidya or Vedic architecture in harmony with natural law. The city is Maharshi Vedic city, nestled in the cornfields of Iowa, emerging there a whole city built using the principles of Stapatya Veda, of this beautiful wisdom of Vedic architecture. We see here an article from the Des Moines Homestyle magazine entitled Transcendental Habitation. Vedic architecture takes advantage of the sun's nourishing energy. Another article here, the Rob Report, Veni Vidi Vedic. Ancient architectural practices find a holistic home in Iowa. And here we see beautiful pictures of the Fairfield Mayor Ed Malloy's Vastu home. Here we see the actual practical application, not just a theory, but the application of all the principles that we've been hearing about in these discussions. Here's another article from AAA Living Magazine, the American Automobile Association. Iowa Shangri-La, the state's newest town, is also one of its most innovative, from urban design to environmental and spiritual health. Come and explore Maharshi Vedic City this summer. Here an article from the Washington Post, Mind Over Mortar. Proponents of Vedic design believe our homes can determine our health. What does science have to say? Well, we've already heard that very clearly from Dr. John Hagelin. A, a very well-written and thorough article on the principles of Stapatya Veda and the scientifically established understanding and recognition of the benefits of the application of these principles. That article reprinted worldwide in magazines and newspapers from the Washington Post. Here's another article indicating the spread of this knowledge around the world from the Deccan Herald of India. Can our homes determine our health and wealth? Here's another one from the American Way, the in-flight magazine of American Airlines, one of the magazines, of course, that's widely read as people travel the world. Home and peace. Using the ancient architectural secrets of Vedic design, you could possibly transform your house into a holistic home. Dr. Hartman mentioned that peace palaces are to be built all over the world. Centers which utilize are built according to these principles of Vedic architecture in harmony with natural law, which will be the centers of peace for entire towns and communities and cities. These peace